Hi guys, welcome back from the video. Today you join me and Sam on Landswick Cliff. Give a bit of mixed bag fishing. Hopefully get a few, I'm, I'm sure we'll get a few dogs. We've actually been here for a bit already. Caught a few dogs, I had one little strap. Sam's had a pout in. And uh, yeah, it's a few fish about already, so it's a good sign. And over this mixed ground as well, you never know what you'll get. Got a bit of a mix of baits for different stuff. Normal fish baits, got a bit of crab as well. I've got a wrap of blacks as well because we can fish one rod each in close with the little hooks. So fingers crossed we get a few fish out and uh, hopefully get something other than dogs. I, I was out the other day on Sully Island trying to do another video but that was dead on there. I only had one dog fish and one rock clean so I didn't bother putting a video together just for that. I'm sure you'll get bored of no fish videos just sitting there talking all day. So uh, right we'll get to it and hopefully get back to you with some fish. Well, I've just had the first fish of the session after a load of dogs and a cod. I put a crab out there because over the rough ground, you never know what you'll get. So crab's a really good bait for that over the rough. Bang slack and a cod. I spent all winter looking for them. It's probably the biggest one I've had this year. Well, well this, this season. Just same with Sam then. It's probably about three and a half, four pounds. I'll probably wait in a minute. They're yeah, buzzing with that one. Lovely fish. And that's a good thing with those circle ducks as well. Normally when you do hook a fish, they don't come off. So lifting them up the edge of that cliff, you've got a better chance of actually getting them up. Buzz it with that. Lovely fish. Any of you who know me well enough, you know that won't be, that won't be going back. I'll definitely be coming home with me. Right, let's get that rod back out there now. Hopefully find another one. There's another species for the camera. Little strap eel. I did have one on my second cast, I think it was. I didn't get that one on film, I didn't have the camera set up then. I was waiting close down on the little crab bait. We were just talking then, trying to get a rock clean of another species. I put a bit of rock, um, crab on for the rock clean. And a uh, little strap eel. The species though. Let's get him back. Oh, that's and rigging close. Put up meant for a pout in and uh, had a cracking bite on it, run off. We thought probably a bass and another cod on a sand deal. Had a little black lug bait on the other one, a little black lug on there, and a sand deal on the top when it's taken that. It's bigger than the other one as well, just weighed it and it was four or five, wasn't it? Yeah, four pound five. Where's the other one? It's holding both up, is it? Get the hook out. Spent all winter fishing for cod, don't seem to get many. And you go fishing in the summer, well, spray and catch them. Look at that. Buzzing with that. Can't go wrong with that. Three and a half and four and a half. That's a big one I just had. Days. We thought it was a bass when it first came up, so we, we walked it round into the bay on our right hand side there, Sam went down. But it's a cod. Can't complain. Happy days, hopefully get some more fish out now. I just had another bite on the scratching rig. Let's see what it is. Hoping to get some more pout in for bait. Be so careful when you go over the edge, reeling fish up. Go in. There's a fish on there, I think. Pouton, I think. Or was it? Oh no. Another dog. You be so careful as you're reeling fish up here. Just keep it only like a couple of foot of the tip over the edge. Just to make sure your line obviously don't scrape the edge of the rocks and you're safe then. Safety is key when you're cliff fishing.
that tides these now, so my just coddling have moved off and the dogs are moving in. And then we're these tightening up. Yeah, we'll get this thing unhooked now. I've had loads of these today, or this morning. We'll get it back, hopefully get some more coddling. Just thought I'd have a, well, it's coming to slack water now, so we're just talking about having to go for an eel. So I'm gonna chuck one out with a, a, a pulley rig with heavy hook link. I think that's like 250 pound pair of Atos. And I'm gonna beat that up with Joey mackerel. So I don't know if you've seen the tote video I've done, but I'll show you how I bait up my joeys. I showed on there, but I'll show you again now. I normally cut the tail off. And then going up the, from the tail up to the head, going up the lateral, I basically, I put a slit going up. And then I get my bottom hook of the, of the panel. And then I go basically in where the gill plate is, and then in there and out where the eyes are. And then I push that hook of the line in that slit I made. So it stays all neat, but still making sure there's enough for that hook showing. And I put that on my beta needle. There we go. And I just get, just wrap that up there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add more bait to it. So I'm just going to basically split this joey. I'm going to head and, well, not head and full the head off, but cut the half the head off. And then I'm just going to split it right up. So basically, take a fillet off with all the guts in the head. basically just split it on the middle and on the other side I'll put that against it but I'll put it so the flesh side is out don't really think it makes that much of a difference but it's just in my head it's more it's just like the sense getting out quicker and even all the little fish ripping up the flesh and then might attract something bigger in and just wrap that up to it off and because I got a panel that actual panel hook with the interned eye basically I then just get that and then hook it through the top I don't wrap it around at all and then hook that in and then up to the top and there we go perfect conga bait will probably be a dog to be honest but gotta give it a go I get, I'll probably put a weak link on this as well, so I did hook a big eel. There's a little bit of snag out there, so the last thing you want is hook a big fish and then lose it to a snag. So I'll get this up now. It's coming to slack water, so it's always a good time for an eel when that tide eases. And uh, hopefully get a nice eel on the camera. Just baited up my uh, next rig, ready to go. Just using the standard pulleys, really. My long pulleys. And I'm just baiting up with a bluey now. So I'm just cutting a, because I'm using the dongles as usual. Just cut a piece of the bluey, same length as the dongle. And then I'm just going to put a slit up it as usual, for that dongle to sit through. Because I find it definitely makes a difference in the cast and actually unclipping, like making sure it unclips properly when the dongle's going straight through the centre of the bait. Because I've had a few mates that have used it recently and they say it's no good because it doesn't unclip as much in the cast. And nine times out like of tennis where they've elasticated the dongle against the outside of the bait, and I think it makes a big difference myself. So, uh, just that on. It's got a little bit quiet now. It's, I think it's coming up to about, yeah, it's about it's an hour into the drop, so a little bit quiet. It'd be nice to get a bit of tide come through again. Another chance, another chance of a cod then, which would be nice. 
what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, the other half of the blue I cut off, I'm just going to basically like take a little fillet off of that, put that up against it, to bulk the bait out a little bit. Yeah, it's been a pretty good session so far, those two, those two codling, um, pouting, quite a few dogs now, and a couple straps. You're missing loads of bites on the scratch and rigging closer. I can't seem to hook the pout in. Probably make a difference there. No tide as well. But a tide always helps to hook the fish. There's the next bait ready to go. Nice bluey bait. Stick that up there now and see what else we can catch. I don't know, I'll probably give it another hour or so, I'd imagine. Because obviously, as that tide drops away from the cliff, your left rod, Sam. Sam had a bite down on his rod. I'll probably reel in that rod I had for a conger now as well. Sam did miss a bite on his bait for a conger. It was probably only a little one though, by the look of the bite. So it's always worth putting out a big, big fish bait over slack water in the, in the deeper marks for a conger. So um, yeah, well, we'll get this up now, a bluey bait. Hopefully, catch some more fish. But guys, that's pretty much the end of another session. One too bad of a trip. It was two codling made that worth it, I think. But we had loads of dogfish. Struggled to get past them at one point. We had a couple of eels or small eels. Sam had that pout in. It was a nice mixed bag. As a thing with that up here, when the fish is quiet, at least over the mixed ground, you got a chance of a bit, bit of everything really. Bring a bit of a mix of baits, a few different rigs. Yeah, better chance of getting when you're fishing for bites rather than a specific species it's always worth going over the mixed ground so yeah it's worth the session nice morning for it as well so yeah so uh, all the gear is pretty much packed away now we've got a few rigs to clean up now get them packed away in the box and head back down to the to the car what i might do is when we get back down to the car i might get the camera and have a walk down the beach now the tide's dropped off and i'll basically show you back up towards the cliff and where to where to fish so i'll probably do that as when we go back down now but uh, I think that's that done for another session. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.